Good morning, um, everyone. Uh, today, uh, I thought we'll go through this uh, called the uh, um, aspiration, uh, aspiration for rebirth in the pure realm of Sukhawati. Um, I think uh, we will, I mean, see the why it's also important as a, to generate uh, what or oh, what is the main uh, uh, purpose of reborn in the pure land is a, uh, our aim or our goal is a, uh, a reaching to the unsurpassable nirvana uh, or uh, complete buddhahood, uh, you call um, uh, uh, generate the mind of enlightenment. After the generating the mind of enlightenment, then we have to train Buddhasattva's practice. So um, if we, um, in the samsara, uh, there are lots of the circumstance which has become uh, obstacle to continue our training. Um, and uh, 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 especially until we reach to the uh, reach to the path to the patient, you know, um, which is a, uh, any circumstance we can tolerate or any circumstance we're not going to, uh, you know, disturbed or uh, then uh, until that we need uh, kind of like a safe and secure on our path. So that safe and secure is a be more better in the like pure land as a Dewajin. Because uh, once you're reborn in the Dewajin and your uh, circumstance to continuing in practice or of the Buddhasattva or training is a much more uh, um, what called the better. So I think that reason. Then uh, once we reach uh, path of the patient, I, I mean reach to the patient, then it doesn't matter where we're born. Is it everywhere? Is it become a dewajin? You know, even we were born in the hell, it become a dewajin. But right now, as a uh, if, uh, like an ordinary person like uh, us, if we were born in the unfavorable circumstance, then uh, it have good chance to losing our faith to the Dharma, losing our effort to the practice of the Dharma because of those circumstance. Uh, uh, sometime because you're losing the faith, sometime you're forced by other to, uh, you know, stop doing that one. So, so, so this reason, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, but once we, uh, this reason, I think uh, beginner, uh, ordinary uh, Buddhasattva who uh, devoted to Dharma and really want to practice as a, I think if, if we can reborn in the pure land, is a, uh, I think good circumstance for our continuing our uh, trading the path to the Buddhahood. So I think this reason reborn in the Dewajin because uh, sometimes, you know, we can, you can hear some like great enlightened being like His Holiness Dalai Lama or uh, His Holiness Jyamadruba. I hear from them directly. They say uh, they can, they wish to be reborn in the hell to benefit sentient beings. So that kind of a beings, they are capable to go to the hell without the disturbing their path from the hell's uh, circumstance. But a person like us, if we go to the hell, then we're totally going to disturb uh, our path, uh, path of uh, continuing Dharma by health circumstance of the uh, 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 intolerable sufferings. I think that's the reason uh, ordinary practitioner, beginner practitioner ha uh, have a better circumstance or uh, a more uh, suitable uh, favorable condition for the Dharma practice is better than uh, try to choose to the harsh place. So, so that reason, I think, uh, 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 reborn in the pure land of the Sukhavadi is especially uh, 
person who are training on the Buddhist or practice as a necessity. So that way, long termly, we can benefit many beings. So, so I think this reason, uh, this kind of prayer is a, a really important uh, to, to be then um, um, to be reborn in the uh, pure land of the origin. And this prayer actually describe about uh, 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 you know four uh, cause to reborn in the origin. There is a four cause. Uh, it's a specifically four cause to reborn in the origin. As um, a, a in, uh, detail, explain on this uh, 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 prayer. So I think uh, uh, knowing of those I think, because uh, lots of time we may think we will fulfill long as we put the aspiration prayer long as we're prayer, you know, long as we have intention. Uh, but Buddha himself said, all phenomena are debating on the cause and condition. There's a, no phenomena will be uh, uh, establishing through one cause or one condition. Have to be gathering the fully cause and condition. So uh, in this text, explaining the full cause and condition of a, uh, 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 of a reborn in the pure land of the Dewajan as a name, as a four causes in this. So, so, so that way, uh, I think this kind of prayer is a short, but uh, uh, you know, anyone can practice because uh, the short, but it's a profound, have a complete of a, uh, the path to what is necessary in the pure land of the Dewajan. So, uh, uh, so that reason, this is called a, is a really profound path of the um, text, text as a, is, which is later you will see in the Chamiraga as a road. Okay, so uh, first we try to understand the history of the Amitabha. But the Amitabha was like us at the beginning, ordinary human beings, ordinary beings. Uh, not always a Buddha, not always if they have these qualities. Uh, but uh, then uh, in the, there's a true story of Buddha Amitabha. I think there are more than two story, but uh, the, we will talk about the two story. One is from the Amitabha Sudra that the Buddha taught. Uh, in the Amitabha Sudra, there's called the Bhikshu or fully ordained called the Chuji Jhune, long time ago, many years ago. And, uh, and he met one Buddha named called the uh, Tadagada Lokti Ishwar uh, uh, Raja. This is not our Lokti Ishwara. Lokti Ishwar Raja, there's an, another Buddha's name. So, uh, and uh, he generated the mind to enlightenment or bodhicitta from this Buddha, Buddha and received the many years, many years about the, uh, all different uh, uh, pure land and different Buddha's, uh, uh, you know, quality and uh, 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 and uh, uh, how to say, um, Goba, Goba mean the how look uh, and uh, what quality of the, those pure mini Buddhas. So after receiving all those teachings, like like countless Buddhas, Buddhas pure lands, uh, quality and uh, uh, um, appearance of a uh, pure land, then Amitabha, uh, that time is called the Chuji Jhune. Chuji Jhune uh, make uh, special prayer, aspiration prayer to uh, compound it of all those Buddha pure lands quality and uh, uh, character as a together and uh, have his pure land. So that way, one way is this pure land of the Sukhavati is a uh, reborn, I mean, like quality is like a compounded of all the pure land of the other Buddhas because each Buddha's pure land have their own special quality, you know, but this Amitabha, he one is, and 
he that aspiration of that aspiration is not just achieved that the one aspiration sometimes because we have this attitude about just go to the temple or go to the lama and do one aspiration prayer or prayer request and fulfill after the making this uh, aspiration prayer by amidaba is called sometimes called the 500 aspiration prayer by amidaba and it took many eons to fulfill that prayer. How make that fulfill prayer is by Amitabha. And of course, train the Bodhisattva or training continually, like practice of the six paramita and practice of the four gathering, the you know, uh, disciples, and that kind of training as it did many eons. Through those practice, like uh, other way we can say, through uh, many eons, uh, accumulation of a merit and accumulation of wisdom and fulfill his aspiration prayer that what he make, you know, that way. And he uh, have this uh, Sukhodi pulet. He generate his own pulet. So that is showing us that what we learn is that when we make the prayer, aspiration prayer, the how to fulfill that aspiration prayer is that we have to accumulate a great amount of merit and wisdom. Through the accumulation of great merit and wisdom, we will fulfill our prayer. Otherwise, just doing prayer itself, not going to fulfill anything, you know? So, so that is, a, we can learn from the Buddha Amitabha. Because Amitabha made 500 aspiration prayers. Like uh, one, as I said, his pure land will be compounded of all those Buddha's pure land qualities. One, as I said, his pure land is especially anyone who have a prayer, uh, uh, you know, uh, and even that is an ordinary person can be reborn there. And another one is his aspiration prayer, as I said, anyone recall his name, will be reborn in the pure land of the Sukhavati. So that kind of a 500 aspiration prayer, he made from, from, uh, from uh, to the, after the receiving teaching from this uh, uh, Tadagada uh, Lokteshwara Raja, and uh, uh, he many eons accumulated merit. So that way he fulfilled his pr prayer. The result of the fulfill his prayer, Buddha Amitabha had Amitabha pure land. So that is it from the Amitabha Sutra mentioned about the Buddha Amitabha and uh, how he uh, can say generate or he uh, manifests his pure land of Sukhavati. And uh, another one is uh, in the White Lotus Sutra also mentioned about Amitabha. In the White Lotus Sutra, it's a different time again, Amitabha's life when he was uh, uh, before become a Buddha. Uh, he was uh, born when the universal monarch called the Zipki Munchu. And uh, in, he had one minister called the, uh, uh, oh, I think, Gazotul Ocean of Dust or something like that. So the minister had one. Uh, uh, son, he's called the uh, essence of the ocean, uh, and that um, son, the minister's uh, son, become uh, uh, ordained and become a Buddha. So when he become a Buddha, his name become a Buddha, Rinchenyibu, uh, essence of the jewel. So uh, essence of the jewel Buddha, uh, you know, uh, what called encourage to the king, his father's boss can say the king, uh, uh, um, uh, universal monarch king, uh, and that that king became uh, you know generate the bodhicitta and train the bodhisattva practice, and later and uh, uh, he also that time um, you know. Uh, uh, um, That Buddha, Kyajubu, uh, uh, Rijinibu, uh, prophesized that in the future, in the north, Pure Land will be in the Sugawadi and name Sugawadi and such and such will come. So now uh, that 
Buddha of the Gatsuni Bu was a Shajamun Buddha, now our Buddha. So, so that that is also in the uh, um, uh, Wild Lotus Sudra mention about the uh, uh, Buddha Amitabha's purin and how Amitabha become. So th th those reason uh, uh, is that way. The title is said aspiration for the rebirth in the pure realm of the Sukhavati. Pure realm of the Sukhavati is a, is a, this is a particularly pure realm because. Uh, I mean, the, all the uh, Buddhist, uh, um, you know, um, Buddhist uh, pure land, can say, not necessarily always be pure as a uh, Sukhavati. Like uh, uh, another uh, one example is uh, where we live right now is called the pure land of Shajamuni. This is the land of the Shajamuni Nirmanakaya form. But our land is not necessarily we all, everyone will see as a pure, except uh, like uh, when Buddha was alive, there also was uh, one Tsambara uh, Bajin who is actually visitor from the other, another planet too. And he saw this as a like pure land, as a Dewajin. Then Buddha blessed to the everyone they saw one week uh, as a Dewajin, you know, our pure, this land otherwise uh, rest of us we don't see this as a pure land we see as a you know all the you know uneven place you know uh difficult to place a lot of the desert uh, as uh, uh, i mean there we have lots of uh environmentally hardship some areas are too cold some areas are too hot and some are uneven some are too dry and then lots of hardship we see through the, our planet so that way it's not that pure Make sense? But the origin is not like this. Always every being, whoever born there, everyone will equally see as a pure. That is one. And the second one is the title is called the Sukhavati. Sukha. Sukha in the uh, uh, joy yeah, or happiness. One, why Sukha, pure, uh, Sukha, pure land of the Sukhavati sentient beings are not suffering? Reason is a one thing is they're not suffering. Why? Because they don't have an afflictive emotion of attachment. They, there's one we have one text. It said in the theogen, even the name of attachment is not exist. So that is showing us why we suffering is because of the, our attachment. More we attach more will experience a suffering. So in the Dewajin beings, they are totally free from suffering. So, so when they, I mean, free from suffering, also is called a, 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 a joyful. This joy is not like a, what we enjoy from the cup of tea or cup of coffee or cup of or nice food or, you know, temporary joy. This is called a, a exhaustless uh, bliss or uh, is uh, translated as exhaustless bliss called the samigitewa in Tibetan, which is mean the never end. So that pure lens beings, they totally, fully joy, not like us, temporary or sometime, you know? So they always be totally uh, joy. Uh, 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 one reason is it because they are free from negative emotion as a, such as attachment. Uh, two, also that pure land have a, a fulfill all their wish from the uh, wish fulfilling tree or space. They don't need to put effort to find your food, clothes, and all those. So that reason is a totally pure and joyful. So that way it's called the Sukhavati. So this is why the title text come. Okay, so this first translation is not so good. This says, this treasure of the Kama Chame practice. One thing is that they don't understand, they misunderstood the Tibetan pronunciation, uh, I mean the spelling. This not same as a Chame Rinpoche's name, Chame. This is it. What it's saying is it actually practice, I think this is better, practice this, this one without the daybreak, 
or without the missing the day. So it means that every day, this uh, Kamachame is uh, requesting to us to so practice this one is uh, every day without the day missing. Even my hand was, uh, you know, painful. I have a writing this down, walk my own hand. Lagbanayan, baby, it's with effort. Even if my hand is sore, I write down this with effort. Uh, uh, and I think it may benefit quiet a few beings. So quiet as a talking about the uh, many and few beings, there's a mambo gala. So when it's a talking about the quiet, mean that every sentient being in the samsara, you know, for the benefit of every sentient beings. But here, in the extra put the few beings mean the particularly being who are with a leisure and endowment, you know, called the precious human beings. Those can benefit. If you don't want to copy it, borrow it. This is also misunderstood. Okay, I'm not, I don't. This is what it means is it actually uh, If someone want to copy, please lend them. Because sometimes in the Tibet have a certain people have a call the text so precious and they're not allowed to copy, not allowed to, you know, we have a text a kind of like a, um, what call, um, kind of restrict, you know, certain text, you're not allowed to copy, you're not allowed to, you know. And uh, in the Western is called the copyright. <laughs> so we put too much restrict. You're not allowed to do this one. You cannot do this one. This one. So Kama Chame Rinpoche say, if anybody need, please lend them, you know, without a, uh, you know, restrict. So uh, in the Tibetan say, Pichu, Pichu is also, it means that if somebody want to copy, Pichu as the same as a Pichu. If, if uh, in, 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 anybody want to copy, please uh, lend them without a kind of restrict. So, uh, because of some, uh, what called the advanced practice, like, uh, you know, uh, like six of Naroba, five of Mahamudra, and a certain text, you see, we're not allowed to uh, ordinary people, can, you know, without the, uh, like a Ngondro and those finish, we're not allowed to read. But this one is a no need all of those restrict. Anyone can read. So that reason said, if anybody want to be a uh, copy, please let them. Because at that time, there is one not have this copy machine. So most of people copy by hand. So, uh, and so that reason is, is a sent, a borrow. There's a nothing more beneficial than this one. So it means that in this text, complete detail of a cause to reborn in the pure land of the origin is complete in this text. There are lots of uh, prayer to reborn in the origin. Many, many people wrote, but uh, not like this, complete all those four causes. So uh, that reason saying is a, there is a, uh, uh, said there's a nothing more beneficial than this one. If you don't want uh, than this, there's a no more instruction more profound than this. So this means why this is so profound? Because uh, uh, Sukhavati pure land is so profound. Why? Because even the ordinary beings, once you have this intention to reborn in the Dewachan and you have those four causes complete, you even your ordinary being, you can reborn in the pure land. But other pure land, you have to have a sudden realization to reborn there, like a reach to the first bumi or something like that. You know, like a Sambhogakaya pure land, you have to have a first bumi or a ten bumi, Buddhisattva. But at the origin, only pure land that anyone can reborn, even your ordinary beings like us. So that reason, they say there's no instruction more profound than this. One, also two is it, uh, 
pure land of the Sukhavati, say both cause and result, both are easy to accomplish. Cause is not that difficult. Only you need those four causes. And result is not that difficult to reborn there. Long as you have those complete four causes, even you don't have to reach to the first bumi or some enlightened body, you still have chance to reborn there. So that reason, because this is much more simplicity of a, uh, of, of a reborn in the pure land as a best, by cause and result both, that way it's called, a, this is a profound. Uh, uh, th that is how it become a profound. Sometimes we have a profound means something really complicated one then said, oh, this is so profound. You know, actually, I think somebody told me, if somebody can teach really good, make you really simple, teaching become really simple that can understand anyone. But somebody have a difficulty to teaching, then that is become so complicated that teaching because they cannot explain clearly. Same thing is also poem, poem, yeah, poem. Best poem writer, anyone can read and understand is the best one. Not that someone who can write a so complicated one. Only few people can understand, you know. So, so that reason, this is why this is so profound because anyone, you know, can be candidate to reborn in the pure land long as you have this cause. So that way, cause and condition are so simple or so easy to accomplishing that reason, this is called a, uh, uh, so profound. Uh, this is a root of my dharma. So Kama Chamiya saying root of my dharma mean, uh, he practice this every day. That way, root of my dharma. Don't cast it aside. Strap in the practice. This is the sutra tradition. As the uh, uh, as, so, this is actually basically is uh, all the those different sutra like uh, uh, Amitabha Buddha Sutra, White Lotus Sutra, uh, King of the Noble Prayer Sutra, uh, also Shastra like uh, Udara Tantra, and uh, many uh, those uh, sutra uh, tradition. Basically, in the uh, sutra tradition. So that way, this is a Sudra tradition is a appropriate to recite if uh, even if you have no received the transmission. So what it means if you receive the Amitabha, uh, you know, empowerment, transmission, teaching, that's wonderful. Even you don't have a transmission, still you allow to do this one because this is not restrict as a tantra. Make sense? So that reason saying is you loud because in the Tantra, you have to have a lineage transmission and blessings. Otherwise it's inappropriate to practice. But Sutra tradition, particularly this, this prayer is a mainly a road according to the Sutra tradition. So that reason, even you don't have a transmission, you still, you can practice. You still, you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, Use this text. The, he said, "You without you can you have a permission to do that one." It become a too many. Okay, then here said the text itself said Emaho. Emaho is a. Uh, are they Sanskrit word? It means that some kind of like a amazing or marvelous in the Tibetan called the Ngosarwetsi. Which is I mean that some some kind of a amazing something extraordinary seen by uh, uh, or uh, thinking about the quality of the Suko the pure land uh, so so you um, the, like a uh, Chame Rinpoche so amazed from this pure land's quality and uh, so so that reason is called the. Uh, uh, he he start with Emaho. This is a so when you say Emaho. At that time, you should remember the quality of the pure land because uh, uh, <clears throat> if you don't know the quality of the pure land of the Sukhavati, then uh, 
uh, so you have no reason to, uh, you know, eager to uh, reborn in there. So our main why we really eager to re uh, want to reborn in the pure land of the Sukhavati is it because of the quality uh, of the Sukhavati. Uh, there are some many qualities uh, which is actually later will come. Uh, so we don't want to repeat, but uh, uh, but in the future when you recite in this prayer. Whenever you said Emaho at that time, you just vividly uh, try to remember the quality of the Sugo, the pure land. So then actually text comes. Now, uh, 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 as a, uh, earlier I mentioned in this text, uh, is a explaining of the four causes. So first causes, as a, as a um, I think, I also wrote on the poster, it said, visualizing the pure land again and again. So we have to try to visualize in pure land, the uh, outer universe and inner uh, beings in the pure land of the Dewajin. So that way here, first, as I said, Emaho, in the direction of the seeding sun from here, it means that here is a talk of the Shajamani Buddha's pure land of the, of the Zabuling from here. From this Zambuling, I mean the pure land is a north direction, direction of the north. So sun, sun is a set in the north. And uh, so Tibetan we call that Nyamanu, it means the north. Pass in innumerable world. This innumerable. Uh, if you are in Latin beings. And there's no innumerable of a distance. You know, you cannot, you know, everything is in mental projections. So you can, within the here, you can make this as a pure land. So mainly this is talking about the ordinary beings. So that way they use as an innumerable world. So this innumerable is the name of the number. Indian uh, number is uh, like, uh, uh, you have, we have to count this way. One, ten, hundred, thousand, uh, ten thousand, you know, uh, so, so that is a counting one, uh, like one is a one, ten is a two, hundred is a three, thousand is a four. So, like this name of the uh, number, when you reach to the 60, that is called the innumerable number. Uh, that is the name of the, uh, when you reach into the, this number 60. So the uh, mini universe beyond like a, uh, uh, an innumerable world. And not just only one innumerable, many innumerable worlds. Okay, in the Tibetan said, it means the many innumerable. So they, they thought, this translator thought innumerable mean kind of like a, an, uh, calculable, so that way they didn't put, but I have to put the mini innumerable. So, so mini is a show you as a innumerable mean that name of the number. There's a one name, Indian astrology. I mean, Indian, uh, what called this uh, um, system, there's a number 60, 60, 60th name is called the innumerable. I don't know where's how much there's. And slightly uh, elevated above us. What does this mean? That like slightly higher one. It means it's showing us a this is not a worldly like a, a samsara. This is a, 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 a nirvana or beyond the samsara. So that way it's a slightly higher or the above. You see. So that that is a pure land of the sukhavati. So earlier I mentioned what is the sukhavati mean. You know, uh, because those beings are uh, free from uh, suffering and they have a, uh, uh, what call, exhaustless bliss. I think they translate as a Tibetan, we call the Sami Gitewa. Actually, Sami Gitewa mean, uh, meaning is a, that uh, bliss uh, free from uh, afflicted emotions, free from defilement which is called the Sami Gitewa, but uh, some dictionary they translate as a, a, a exhaustless uh, bliss. I think some they translate this way. So uh, point is the same. 
you know, when you have a bliss that is uh, free from attachment, that bliss never end. Our bliss, we have some degree of a bliss, joy, but uh, it will change to the suffering because that our bliss and joy is based on the afflicted emotion. You know, a background of that bliss or a, a joy is a, a, come from the afflicted emotion. So that way it always ends with the suffering. And the pure lens, this joy or happiness is never end. So, so that reason sometimes is translated as a um, uh, exhaustless bliss. Sometimes it's translated as a uh, uh, what called um, effortless joy. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so point is basically it means that. Uh, that uh, fully joy, you know, there are no uh, suffering of change. Our joy is uh, called the suffering of change. Pure end of the Sukhavad is uh, always be joy. That way, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, what called the um, Sukhavad? And our is not Sukhavad. Why? Because uh, uh, our joy is uh, temporary. Uh, and our joy is also sometimes it become a cause to the more suffering because of those joys. Uh, I, I one time I mentioned this one. Uh, uh, you know, when before I come to U U.S. Uh, uh, in, in India, I have a particular mattress. You know, as a, like a this is not good quality. But I'm comfortable to sleep on that mattress 10 years without any problem. Every night I had great sleep. You know, I can sleep, no problem. But I stay in US for two years. After two years, I went back. I, I tried to sleep on that mattress, same mattress before I used. I couldn't sleep. It's almost like I was sleeping on the rock, you know. So so that is it. So, so I said, you know, so which one is my source of suffering that old mattress or new mattress <laughs> if i can carry my new mattress to the india then i don't have to experience the suffering so that way our joy is it sometimes become a cause to the suffering you more enjoy the day you lose in that joy you become a suffering you know uh, people who had a great earlier life joyful life when they are young when they be, people, those people getting old and they have a miserable because they couldn't enjoy it that same way. And f physically, financially, emotionally, so many ways they couldn't enjoy that one. But uh, the mind is that they always want the same things, you know? So, so then people who went to hardship with the earlier life, they don't have that much suffering when they get older. I think especially emotionally. So, so those are, uh, our joy, whatever we experience, the joy is it never be effortless, you know, always be end. But uh, so go with the pure lens, whatever joy experience from the, you know, uh, uh, any kind of uh, material or physically, whatever joy experience, it never end. So that way it's called the sukhavati. Sukh, sukh means the happiness or joy. Okay. <laughs> so, and, 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 and said, although I do not see it with my flu flute feel eye. Actually, they translate as a really literal, literally this one. Actually, not necessary flute field eye. It's, I think, not correct translation. In the Tibetan, we use as a chupuru. Actually, chupuru means the water bubble. Bubble. You know, in the water, we see the bubble. Indian uh, poem. They use a ice name as a water bubble because ice ice ball is a look like a water bubble. So basically, it's a talking about the flesh eye, you know. Is the Kamach Tamil Rambachi say, I do not see it with my flesh eyes, you know, ordinary eye or the flesh eye cannot see, but it is a vivid clay in my mind. But he can see in his mind or wisdom eye can see clearly. I think uh, 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 there's one story. Uh, one day, Buddha asked to Ananda, said, Ananda, you really like to see the pure land of the Sukhavadi? And Ananda said, yes, I really like to see the Sukhavadi pure land. So Buddha said, okay, then face the north direction and pray to the Amidaba. 
So when uh, Ananda faced to the north direction and prayed to the Amitabha and Buddha's, through the Buddha's blessing too, he see clearly Amitabha pulate. So that is not from the Ananda's, his eyes. It's from the, his, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, what called the Buddha's blessing of the wisdom that, that see. So, so this way, I think one way is that one, two ways, uh, our uh, flesh eyes distance have a, uh, what called measurement. You know, we can see only a certain distance, but, uh, but uh, uh, wisdom mind have no distance. Mind have no distance, you know. We can imagine greater, so you can uh, imagine a uh, wiser, so you can uh, imagine, you know, uh, father's majesty, so mind have no boundary. So, so that reason in the mind, you can train anything is possible to can become. So that way it's called the Tibetan, we call the Shinkan Jo. It means the uh, uh, accomplishing the pure land. Through the practice of the accomplishing the pure land, and you can see clearly. So in the Vajrayana, it's called the meditation on the mandala. You know, we meditate on the uh, Amitabha's mandala. And so, so there's a two. It's called the base and basic. So uh, also also all the university and beings. So this is a talking about the uh, pure land of Sukhavadi as a universe of the pure land of the Sukhavadi, which is the base. Uh, so so Gama Chamerabhaji said, it's a cannot see by that ordinary eye, human eye, because uh, it's impossible. You know, flesh eye can see that much. But when you reach to the wisdom uh, in your mind, then uh, through the practice, uh, you will have that uh, capable to see uh, all phenomena, uh, everything, you know, there's no boundary, there's no limitation. So that way in his mind clearly, so how he become that clearly in mind is it by, uh, I think, uh, training, you know, anyone can be become like that if you train. So uh, this mean can be say in in his through his training of the uh, accomplishing the pure land in his mind and become capable to see pure land clearly. Or another way we can say because he had the wisdom eye, through the wisdom eye can see. Uh, uh, further like Ananda saw the pure land of the Sukhavadi. It's not from the Ananda's, uh, uh, his uh, human flesh eyes, because uh, uh, Ananda is not Arahat at that time, and uh, was an Arahat, and uh, he doesn't have that capable of uh, capacity to see that far. Even Arahat, some, some Arahat doesn't have that capable to see that far. Make sense? Like a Mogayana see where was his Father was born, but Buddha and Buddha Sattva, they have that capacity. So that way Buddha's wisdom blessing uh, show the Ananda go the pure land. Same way uh, uh, Chame Rinpoche, he's saying, he say, I don't have, from my flesh eye, I cannot see because he don't have the human flesh superpower eye, you know? It's just flesh eyes, flesh eye, anyone is, I think, similar. But uh, uh, but this one is uh, more like uh, from the wisdom, from the uh, mind, in his mind, is really clear. Uh, so that is a show as a eye, physically eye, as a distance have a limitation, boundary. Uh, but mind doesn't have the distance or boundary. So, so that way, uh, Chame Rinpoche said, I cannot see through my eye, physical eye, but I can see through my mind clearly. So this one is a, from the uh, remembering the pure land again and again. So that is a two, the pure land is a divided into two, you know, support and supported. So this is a support or a universe. Then next one is a supported. Uh, of the beings of the uh, in that universe, y universe, universe. Hola. Okay, then uh, now that is the base and uh, support and su supported as if 
their rice uh, reside reside at the Bhagawan Amitabha. So it's a word of the Bhagawan. I think uh, Bhagawan is a kind of ancient Indian word. And not necessarily always talking about the Buddha. I think someone is a spiritually leader, a higher one, you know, higher than ordinary human beings. So it's they call the Bhagwan. Uh, like if you even these days in the Indian, some they 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 call their teacher, they call the Bhagwan, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so this word one is a I think if literally translate. I, I, it become like a holiness or a holy one. I think become that one. But uh, since it's Tibetan translator, they trans didn't translate as a literally this Bhagawan. In the Tibet, we translate Bhagawan as a Chomden De. So that the three uh, word as a Buddha, as a as a as meaning of the Buddha, as a translate as a Chomden De. So uh, so what is the Chom? mean the uh, victory over the Mara. So Buddha is a, uh, you know, victory over the Mara or victory over the afflicted emotion. So that is a one. And then then mean the, who has a quality of the enlightened person, who is a enlightened quality, who possessing the enlightened quality. Then they mean the, uh, the mean he, he who has uh, transcended the world and passed into the nirvana, world means the samsara. So it, it is this one in the Tibetan Chom Deng De, if translated, it can become transcendent, possessed, sor, victor, something like that, I think. Uh, so th this one is, a, I think, in, when it comes to the Tibet, Tibetan translator didn't translate as a uh, literally. So in the uh, Tibetan word said, "tena chomde yao wepame." In the chomde de, it's the same chomde or chomde de, which is a three words: chom de de. Chom means the victor, and den means the uh, possess, and de means the transcend. Mm -hmm. So, so that is the full name of a one of name of Buddha's name. So which Buddha and said that Buddha Amitabha or uh, uh, this uh, 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 name as a Buddha Amitabha. I think uh, that, that the Bhagavan should be this way. Right. Okay, so, and that Buddha's name is we use as a, uh, uh, so, um, is Amitabha. Amitabha is a, I think it's called a measureless light or infinity light or immeasurable light. Uh, the many uh, translate into this way, which is mean that from his, uh, Buddha Amitabha's uh, Radiating with some light from his body is immeasurable, providing all the pure land of the other Buddhas. So that way, it's to say his Buddha's name is becoming measureless light. The, the color of be in uh, he bleeds with a majesty. It means uh, as a, so his color is a ruby red color. Uh, 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 It's a Siji uh, bar. Siji mean the um, how to say uh, they call the majesty or uh, kind of a uh, what call this in the English word <sighs> royal. Mm, uh, like a, uh, some some people have that kind of a, like a, you know magnificent appearance. So this is light is not just light kind of like a uh, you know yeah astonishing oh yeah.
uh, or some people have a you know uh, authority looking yeah glory huh glory yeah yeah i can say glory you can say so it's, it's a kind of like more like appearance as a more powerful so as is a ruby red in color and uh, with the blaze of the majesty or powerful look you can say i think something like that and uh, it's a ruby is a red color ruby red color so red is a Actually, if you look the uh, enlightened, you know, body, speech, mind, quality, and activity, those five colors. So body as a white, speech as a red. So uh, Buddha Amitabha is a uh, uh, enlightened speech, free from attachment, lotus uh, family. Uh, so that way, and also have a, you know, uh, what color? Uh, Attach the uh, uh, you know have a attachment of a compassion toward to the sentient beings. So that reason red color. So, so it's kind of like detached to the sentient beings. That detached is kind of like red color, uh, and also especially when it come to the enlightened body speech mind, I think speech as a red. So when we visualize Om Ahu, also you visualize as a red A because that A is a speech A, speech as a red. So same thing as a Buddha Amitabha is a uh, embodiment of the speech of in Latin from the five family. So that reason, ruby red color. Yeah, và cái thân của ngài là sắc đỏ. Um, và tại sao khi mà đối với lại à, các vị Phật á, Thì khi giác ngộ, ví dụ như là giác ngộ màu, màu trắng Còn đối với Ngài thì phải giác ngộ qua ngữ Nào qua khẩu thì đó là màu đỏ Cho nên là thường thì Ngài đã thoát ra khỏi tất cả mọi cái sự chấp ngã Mọi sự bám chấp Và không có còn những cái vướng bận Không có còn những cái uh, sự uh, phiền não là Đâu gì nữa cả và à, cho nên là thường thì chúng ta thấy là à, những cái sự giác ngộ à, à, của các vị là thông qua là thân ngữ ý à, thì à, ở ngữ hay là ở khẩu hoặc là ở cổ họng thì đó là cái chủng tự a màu đỏ thì à, như vậy đối với lại à, ngày a di đà thì ngày à, đại diện cho um, vị phật ở trong uh, liên hoa bộ ở trong uh, các bộ của các bộ phật á thì ngày à, giác ngộ và với cái thân của ngài à, là giác ngộ quan ngữ cho nên là à, ngài có cái thân hoàn toàn là sắc đỏ yes, so this uh, bliss with the majesty is a maybe not necessarily kind of a, the, I think it's a more talking about that the light is a really glorious light kind of a powerful light because I mean that was a body uh, uh, he bliss the Majesty means that the light is a really strong, not a weak light, you know, like a starlight. It's like more like sunlight. So sun have a really that uh, brilliant. So in the Tibetan, most of the time, I think this is used more like a, a quality of the light. So that is a bliss with the majesty, it means the light. And uh, he is adorned with the 32 uh, good mark, as we call the 32 major mark, and 80 sign or 80 manor mark, such as a wish on his head and will on his feet, and he has one face and two hands. So, but I mean, that was all those major and manor marks is as a symbol city of the enlightened quality. So, this uh, major and manor mark basically. Uh, uh, not only Buddha have this major and minor mark, also universal monarch king have the major and minor mark, those uh, like 80 signs, you know, we, we measure. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, what different between the Buddha's, uh, uh, you know, mark and universal monarch mark is a universal monarch mark is not deep enough, one. Two, is it not on the spot. Sometimes it's kind of like side. So that reason, when Shaijamuni Buddha was born, 
the Rishi comes, check the sign. And the Rishi said, he will become a Buddha. Then the father said, no, 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 he become a universal monarch king. And he said, no way, because look his sign. His sign is not the universal monarch king's sign. His sign is a Buddhist sign. So that is the difference between the Buddhist, those AD and AD uh, major sign and the universal monarch's uh, AD major sign different. You see, Buddha is more uh, deeper and uh, more in the center, you know, on the spot. But the university is a little bit side or slice and they're not deep enough. So that is a different. That reason, uh, I think when uh, that the Rishi, when he come to see uh, Buddha, when Buddha was a baby and he said he become a Buddha, he insists to, to the uh, uh, King uh, Bibisar, not Bibisar, what call? Buddha's father. Shuddhana. Shuddhana, yeah, Shuddhana. And Shuddhana said, no, my son become a universal monarch king. Uh, so, so that is, I think, reason as a, that those signs are Buddhist one is a more deeper and a more profound, more uh, yeah, kind of like a clear and central. So, so that is a, the, the Rishi saw them on the uh, baby Buddha. So that way, so, so this kind of sign, only Buddha have those signs you know, uh, really perform one. So that way, this uh, major and menor mark as a, a complete accomplishment of the true accumulation and uh, wisdom. So that reason, uh, those uh, signs appearing on his body as a, as a result of uh, uh, those uh, um, you know, the accumulation merit and wisdom. So that way, uh, uh, showing us uh, the measure and measure mark, mention it mean he accomplished, complete his uh, accumulation. That way he achieved this one. Yeah, and the có đầy đủ 32 tướng tốt và 80 vẻ đẹp hay là còn gọi là có đủ những cái tướng chính và uh, những cái tướng phụ những cái tướng hảo thì rồi ngài có những cái tướng về nhục kế trên đỉnh đầu của ngài thì rồi có cái gọi là giống như cái bánh xe uh, uh, cái 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 lưng xe uh, gọi, gọi là cái bánh xe ở cái, cái lòng bàn chân của ngài uh, và uh, có và ngày có một mặt ngày có hai uh, cầm ngày ngày trì tay ngày thì trì giữ cái bình bát và uh, uh, kết ứng tay mùi rồi ngày có ba cái lớp uh, y và ngày ngồi uh, kiết già và ở đây á, thì khi mà chúng ta nói là 32 tướng tốt và 80 vẻ đẹp á, thì uh, thường thì uh, thấy là đối với lại không chỉ Đức Phật mới có 32 tướng tốt 80 vẻ đẹp mà các bậc chuyển luân thánh vương cũng có uh, những cái tướng hảo như vậy uh, nhưng mà đối với lại một bậc chuyển luân thánh vương á, thì những cái 32 tướng tốt và 80 vẻ đẹp này thì nó không có được uh, giống như là đậm nét hoặc là nó không có được một cách rõ ràng giống như là của một vị Phật uh, nó, um, bởi vì ngoài cái việc là còn có cái tướng hảo nữa thì còn có những cái dấu hiệu à, bởi vì à, vào cái thời mà Đức Phật sinh ra thì à, các nhà tiên tri thì cũng đã được mời đến à, để xem khi mà trước khi mà Đức Phật à, à, xem tướng khi mà Đức Phật được à, chào đời thì à, nhưng mà à, các vị cũng đã nói rằng là à, à đây không phải là à, bởi vì vua tịnh phạn á vua cha thì nói là à gần như vậy là ngài có thể trở thành một vị à, một bậc à, chuyển luân thánh vương hoặc là ngài trở thành một vị à, vua tài giỏi à, nhưng mà à, nhà tiên tri nói không à, đức phật à, ngài sẽ thái tử sẽ trở thành một vị phật chứ không phải là một bậc chuyển luân thánh vương à, do đó thì những cái nét những cái tướng tốt và những cái vẻ đẹp của đức phật thì nó sẽ luôn luôn có những cái dấu hiệu nó sẽ có cái sự đậm nét À, có cái sự sâu uh, sâu sắc hơn uh, và nó có cái vẻ đẹp 
là gọi là uy nghiêm hoặc là nó sẽ đẹp hơn cả của một vị uh, chuyển hương thánh vương uh, và như vậy thì uh, những cái vẻ đẹp đó nó chính là cái kết quả của việc mà đức phật đã từng tích lũy uh, công đức uh, cũng như là ngài có được đầy đủ trí tuệ cho nên là ngài có được cái uh, những cái tướng hảo những cái tướng tốt đẹp giống như vậy yes. Yes, Oh, I'm not. Okay. I'm looking on the English diction. Okay, so uh, the, I heard there's a one joke. A Tibetan word that uh, Buddha said measure a metal mark as a ten. It's a really similar uh, word, uh, uh, honorable word of the teeth. You know, it's called the ten. So it's a really similar. So somebody teaching Dharma so said, oh, Buddha have a really healthy 32 <laughs> teeth. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not about the teeth, it's talking about the mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has one face and two hands. So this is a one face as a symbol city of a, he's a, uh, uh, inseparable of the Dharmakaya, always be stayed at the Dharmakaya, and two hand as a symbol city of the union of the uh, wisdom, I mean, wisdom and a method, and those two hand as a join at the heart, at the metrician posture, is it those union of the wisdom and method, and hold the arms ball in metrician, and arms ball is also full of a, a nectar. So that is a showing as a his a compassion toward to the sentient beings, you know, uh, 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 to, with the compassion, they continuing fulfilling uh, uh, the beings through the his nectar of dharma teachings. So that one and wearing the dharma robe is a, this case here. Buddha Amitabha is a, called the Nirvanakaya form. So Nirmana Kaya form is wearing the three Dharma robes, you know, uh, lower garment and upper there's the two called the Chögu and uh, Dharma robe and uh, Namjar on the uh, ornament or so another one. So this is, is this is this is the three Dharma robes, you know, <clears throat> uh, Buddha mentioned. And the reason is the Nirmana Kaya is the symbolic city of the detached free from attachment. So because the Nirmana Kaya have to liberate the ordinary sentient beings, you know, that kind of like un, uh, um, unraped, unraped, yeah, the non-liberated beings. So that way they have to be formed as a Nirmana Kaya form to liberate. That is to teach us through how to cut the attachment. So only three Dharma rope is one of the most symbolous cloth system you know there's only three of them so that is showing us how to cut the attachment so that way nirmanakaya form is a nirmanakaya is a uh, buddha of a is called a sign of a kind of the detach from the uh, 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 sense pleasure so that way he not wearing any kind of jewel and ornaments as the symbol is a, how to cut the attachment. Uh, and uh, he is a seated in a Vaja posture. It means that no matter what, Buddha is a never be uh, what called the distracted from the, his mind from the method, method absorption. No matter what he do, he walk, he talk, he speak, he, sleep, he lay down, he uh, you know, teach. Every time any kind of a, uh, activity uh, performed, but mind always be in the state of the uh, mindfulness or can say state of the absorption without the uh, moving. When we try, we only can meditate when we're quiet, sit down and meditation pos position. But once we start talking, once we start walking, our mind is totally distracted. But the Buddha, even they manifest any kind of form, any uh, activity perform, uh, uh, including the walking, talking, sleeping, mind is always be 
meditation. The reason Milareva said, I meditate, you know, even I'm sleeping, even I'm, you know, uh, meditating on the Mahamudra, even I'm walking, even I'm talking. So uh, they, they can reach that state of the mind. So that reason said, Vajra posture. So it said, on the thousand petal lotus and moon deceit. So basically, uh, symbol of the thousand uh, lotus say, said, uh, even they manifest in the samsara free from samsaric falls. Like a lotus was born from the muddy water, but uh, free from the mud, really come clean. So uh, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, fall, free from samsaric falls, sign of a free from samsaric falls as a city on the lotus. And the moon disk is a lots of time saying is a, because they don't have a heat of afflicted emotions. So moon is cool. Water, water, uh, you know, water element. Moon is a water element and cool. So, so that way, as a, a coolness of free from the, is a, is a sign of a from the a free from a heat of afflicted emotion. Or, uh, or another way you can say moon. Uh, this is a, a sign of a free from defilement or uh, uh, obscuration. So the way moon is sit. His bag is supported by the Bodhi tree. So this is a Bodhi tree have to be really huge one. Some commentary is saying it's a, like a, 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 even a tongue itself is a, uh, 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 kind of like a, have a 500 yojana. So, uh, so 500 yojana is so big, you know. Uh, 4,000 ordinary arm span is a one yojana. <laughs> For what 4,000, like a normal size uh, human beings, you know, normal size human beings, uh, five, uh, you know, arm span 400,000 is a one yojana, and that kind of a, uh, 500 times, that tree big. Uh, so, but point is a, the why Buddha tree, you know, all Buddha is a meditator under the Buddha tree. Kenji Jirambaji told me one time, he said one time he was a visiting India and all the, you know, cows sleeping under the Buddha tree. And those people who use the rickshaw, you know, that walking, when they free time, they always sitting under the Buddha tree. Then later he find out that local people told Buddha tree is a much cooler under the shed, shed, shed of the Buddha tree is much cooler than other tree. That way also Buddha choose in Buddha tree to, uh, you know, be, uh, uh, be, uh, sit on the front of the Buddha tree. So, so I think it makes sense that is in India, like especially in the Bodh Gaya, you know, so hard in the summer and Buddha spent their six summer there. Uh, so, so he needs some kind of cool uh, support. So I think that way. So since then, because of the Buddha in Latin under the Bodhi tree, and Bodhi tree is become uh, what called the uh, representative of the Buddha actually before stage was exist. You know, people start playing into the Bodhi tree for rep representative of the Buddha. Missing like uh, there's one story. In the Sharavasti, uh, that you know, uh, uh, Kindapeki, I, I forgot uh, his name. What called? I forgot. Jadwa, Jadwa. When he, he one day because Buddha wasn't there that time in the summer, Buddha went somewhere and he requires Sheriputra to bring one Buddha tree from the Bodh Gaya area, you know, Magat to representative of the Buddha, Buddha. So still, I think they're saying that it's the same one, but there's a really, really old one in the Sarvasti, still in the Buddha tree. So he used as a representative of the Buddha. When he Buddha is not there in the temple, he, when he missed the Buddha, he go to visit the Buddha tree. 
I heard something like that. So, so earlier, the lots of time they use in Buddhist tree as a uh, one way. Buddha was a uh, sitting under the Buddhist tree meditation, and another way. Uh, um, also later they use as a representative of the Buddha as a Buddha tree. So I think there's many different reason Buddha tree is related to the Buddha's life story. And so that way, I think for us, it's easier to say Buddha tree in the Dewajin. So I, I, I think that is good. I don't know, maybe they have a different tree, you know, it's saying it's not a tree as a the, the wood tree, it's said the jewel tree with the jewel ornament, the Dewajin one. So, you know, so I don't know what kind of tree, but it's easier for us to imagine in Buddha tree, really big one and a really great with a uh, adorned with the many ornaments, uh, the jewel. It's a, even the leaf, it's a jewel leaf, not a, a tree leaf. Uh, so uh, something like that they expressing. So that way this kind of uh, uh, supported by the Buddha tree mean that Buddha was uh, sitting under the Buddha tree. Okay, then he gazed upon me from the distance with a compassion eyes. You know, distance, one way the distance means because from here to the watching is really far. Said so many, you know, uh, like a, 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 a innumerable, innumerable uh, a mini number uh, innumerable of a uh, uh, when a, uh, you know far distance. So it's a really really far. One way you can say in the distance. Uh, uh, but when we supplicate uh, uh, patient of the Buddha's eyes, always gaze into us. And another way, you see, even the Buddha is an enlightened being, so we are samsari beings. So long as we have a devotion, Buddha's a compassion, we can receive. You know, so there's no, dif no different from the far or close. Uh, only different is uh, we have to have the pure uh, devotion, you know. If our mind is really not de devoted with it purely, and the mind is really corrupted with a negative, even we're close to that Buddha physically, still we're far, far away, yeah? So like a uh, uh, sun is a shine to the everyone, but if you sit on the place there is a no sun can reach, it's a not sun's fault that you're not receiving the sun, you know? So, so, so that way you have to be in direction of the sun, sun, then you can receive the sun uh, light anywhere you are. So same way, say, you, long as you have the, uh, the devotion and the faith in the clear mind of the Buddha, to the Buddha, you can receive the blessing of the uh, uh, Buddha, say, in, any distance, you know, there's no, like, a, from the distance is a less blessing and from the close one is a less, uh, more blessings. It's not going to be that way. Uh, sometimes we uh, we feel that way. So, like like some sometimes we I see uh, when you have an audience with the, like holiness or holiness Dalai Lama or some high Lama, and people always be rushing to you know to try to sit in front of that guru, and uh, you know that's kind of like seems like they receive more blessings. Uh, I'm not sure that's how you can uh, receive the blessings. So it doesn't matter you are one of the farthest one or you are closest one, long as you have a, a pure devotion, you will receive the great blessings. If you don't have a pure de devotion, even you really at the feet of that guru, you're not gonna receive any blessings. So, so this need for, we need to be receiving this compassion, eye of gazing of compassion, eyes of the Buddha Amitabha, I say, uh, 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 based on the our devotion, you know, if we don't have a devotion, even if it's a close, you are in the devotion, you're not going to receive the this compassion gazing eye of a blessings from the Buddha Amidaba. If you have a pure devotion, even you are from here, you will receive the same amount of blessing, the same as you are in the pure land of the Sukhobodhi. So, so that way it says he gazed upon me from the distance with a compassion eyes. So that compassion eyes, that compassion uh, blessings, I have no distance. But it, even Buddha Amitabha is a far away, you are receiving the same amount of a blessing or wisdom, compassion from uh, Buddha Amitabha. That way, uh, this, this one is the, uh, why is it he gazed upon me from distance, it mean, uh, that one, I said two reasons, I think two ways. One is a uh, physical, 
I mean, double pure lane is a far, so that way, distance. And uh, uh, mentally, I mean, Daba is a enlightened beings, completely Buddha. We are samsari beings. We have huge distance between us and Buddha, you know, but still Buddha's blessing and compassion we can receive long as we have a devotion. So, so that that is. So in the Tibetan, we have a story saying, uh, uh, when you have a devotion, even the dog teeth give you the, uh, uh, what called the relic, R relic. So uh, there's one story that uh, one uh, guy, he go to, to do business to India. The, his mom, every time he leave to India, he, she requires him to bring something relic from India to, for me, Buddha's relic. R relic? R relic. Yeah, so he she requires every time, but he forget because he's so busy with his business. But then one time she said, "If this time you not bring any kind of relic for me to the you know for my shrine, I will get, going to kill myself because you always forget my wish." So then he did went to India business everything. He coming back. He when he get to the near to the house and he just remember oh, oh his mother's you know. I cannot uh, face her without anything to her. If I go empty hand this time, she may kill herself. That is bad. So he just looked around and he saw dead dog and he removed the teeth from the dead dog. And he said, this is Buddha's big teeth to give her. So she put in the really fine fabric, uh, you know, and put in the shrine. And every day she did offering and prostration and, uh, you know, the uh, puja there every day. And uh, when she died, she died with a light, rumble light, you know, rumble light reached to her body. And uh, I mean, not, she not become a rumble, but a, a, actually physically rumble, you know. And from the dog teeth come relic, this ring seal. So, 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 so that, that reason you look the history. There are many uh, story that uh, uh, this stage you talk to these people, this uh, this stage stage you give this teaching to these persons, but are not given to everyone. You know, only few. So. The statue is a material, it's a like rock, it's like a gold, it's just a substance, it's not really Buddha. Because of the, that individual's devotion and that individual's faith make that statue talk to you. If that statue have that capacity, that statue will talk to everyone like what we can talk. It's not, the, it's not from the statue, it's come from that blessed devotions, power of that devotion. So the, when our devotion is powerful enough, even we can make the stage talk to us, you know? So those, that, that, is it, that way, uh, certain beings, they have chance to, can talk to stage like a person to person and, and not happen to the ordinary people like us, you know? So that is a different between the, their devotion, faith is a strong and confident, and our devotion is a shaky, is a, you know, not really strong. That way we cannot talk to those statue. I, I saw many stage, old stage, their story lay that stage talk to someone, you know, not just only talk to someone, as is like there's one uh, in the Samya, there's one huge Amitabha. During the King Lang Tama's time is buried under the ground because they don't want to destroy it. Then Patamba Sanjay went to like a uh, farming and uh, touched to that, you know, that uh, metal, the, uh, you know, uh, digging the ground, tied to the Buddha, say, Amitabha's head. And Buddha Amitabha said, ouch. And uh, then Patamba Sanjay dig and he found that stage. And Amitabha said, if you carry me, you can take me to the temple. Just one person. So Patama Sanji carried the statue like a, you know, small, some small rock. The statue is a huge one, actually. No way, even 10 people, even like a, you know, 20 people maybe cannot carry that statue easily. Huge one. But Patama Sanji can take carry that one. So he, that statue talked to him, you know, Patama Sanji. So certain beings, 
they have a capacity to can even talk to those stage. But I met that stage, this stage never talked to me. And I never heard anyone after the Padamasaje that stage you talk to other people. Make sense? So this is not like a stage you is powerful enough to can talk. I think this is more like the person who received the talk from the stage you have a powerful devotion, strong devotion. That way it happened. So, um, uh, 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 it's, it's not that, uh, you know, the stage you or enlightened beings, uh, you know, compassion is not strong enough to that we cannot talk, we cannot see them. This is a, it's a more like a, our uh, merit and uh, devotion is a, so uh, shake, uh, sh shaking or weak. We couldn't talk to uh, those Buddha and uh, uh, we couldn't uh, see uh, those enlightened beings. So long as, so that way, long as we have a, uh, you know, pure uh, devotion and faith, uh, doesn't matter how far they are, we can, you know, receive uh, the blessings. And uh, also same as offering too. So, so it's just, uh, that way it doesn't matter if it's far or close. You don't have to always be present to do those things. I think uh, if, even from the distance can, can uh, help. So that way, yes, say is a, this, this quote is. Hey, Thank you, Ms. Ngok. Thank you, Mr. Zolti.